Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Gerald Scully, and when I first came to Winneka, I lived at 881 Spruce, and I now live at 845 Foxdale. I've been in Winneka for probably 16 years now. Um, a quick story about how I came to be able to afford Winneka. Um, owned two houses previous to that on the North Shore. Did all the things you're supposed to do. Fix up your house, even though when you buy it, it's in bad shape. And you sell it, and the market keeps going up and up, and then you move up, and your kids get older, and you need a bigger house. Finally, I arrived in Winneka, because Winneka, I think, is a pretty nice place to live. It's tough. It's, it's very expensive to live here, but I've made that choice. My wife has made that choice, and someday I think my children might understand why we, why we made that choice, not that they would, too. Um, but anyway, enough about that. I, I, I've heard a lot of arguments in favor of affordable housing, because... I just heard tonight, 97% of the people who work for the village or work for the taxpayers don't live in Winneka. I think 97% of the people who live in Winneka don't work in Winneka either. They leave Winneka every day. We have a wonderful transportation system, especially in this part of the country, so that you can work where you want and you can live where you want. So <coughs> this, this bunk about having to live in the town that you work in that doesn't hold water. I grew up in Glenview. I grew up on the east side of Glenview. Anybody know where the east side of Glenview is in general? Mm -hmm. It's the rich part of Glenview. You know what my father did for a living? He was a Glenview <coughs> policeman. My father raised me on the east side of Glenview, and he was a policeman. And there was no money coming from anywhere else, and he did it. He not only did it so well, but... <coughs> I felt it every day. I felt all my rich neighbors, doctors, lawyers, everybody else, uh, that they always had more money than me. But you know what? My parents wanted me to live there, and they found a, ma a way to make it work. Um, to think that there's going to be an overreaching mandate, oh, familiar with the term unfunded mandate? Anybody? Sounds familiar lately? Everywhere in this country you look? Um, I don't think it holds water. <clears throat> and uh, the last thing I'd like to say is um, I don't think we need social engineering. I think social engineering is something that we all see very clearly. I think there's good intentions here. Um, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work like so many things, particularly in our country right now, <coughs> that the government wants to do for the people instead of the government getting out of the way and just helping people do what they can do. And for that reason, I would wholeheartedly say, let's get on to the real important business. And the people who can live in Winneka are going to do it, and the people who can't live in Winneka or don't want to live in Winneka are not going to do it. The people who want to work in Winneka are going to commute to Winneka if they can't afford to live there. What is wrong with that? There's no way these formulas are ever going to work out to be anything that anybody's going to be happy with, including the people you're trying to help. Thank you.